Hey, this is Moscow. I'm in Melbourne, Florida at Atlantic Music Center with Brian Getcho. He is the owner and the conductor of this fine music piano shop. And we're here just looking at Piano Grands, um, Yamaha, different type of Piano Grands here in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to talk with Jar Ryan. He's going to get us a tour of the place. And we're just going to check out the pianos and um, have a good time. And I hope you enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Um, today we had Atlantic Music. We're here with um, Brian. Gonna see him in a few minutes, and actually, here he is right here, and uh, he's gonna give us a tour. Hello? I'm gonna let him talk, and he's gonna explain, you know, okay, his nice shop and, and how long he's been here, and then he's gonna tell us about the different pianos here that he has. So, all right, well, welcome to Atlantic Music. Um, we rebuild pianos. We are a dealer for new pianos such as Yamaha and Kawai and we're the North American agent for quite a few of the German piano companies, including Steinweber and Forick and Wilhelm Steinberg. So we sell those pianos along with rebuilt pianos to dealers and customers. Um, our shop, as you can see, we moved into this particular location in, let's see, 2008. I started the business here in Melbourne in 1990, so we're now in 22 years here in Melbourne. And I'd be happy to show you around. One of the things we're really proud of, and the reason we made this move to this larger building, is so that we could have a concert hall and provide music to the Melbourne community. And we'll take a look at that. Two, one. So, Mr. Ryan, this is the uh, place where you have your concert bed for the guests and everything. Yes. Okay. This is a, a small concert hall, as you can see. Mm -hmm. It uh, only seats 99 people. Okay. And uh, we bring in major artists from around the world. We have a wonderful, for instance, a Russian pianist that won the uh, international competition, young artist competition in New York. She's coming to play here. She performed here last year. Okay. We have jazz concerts, and classical. Her name, again, her, name. her name is very hard to pronounce. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, we have lots, in fact, we have two Russians this year. We have uh, another uh, famous, uh, not only is he a, a great concert artist, but he's also a really well-known um, composer, and his name is Alexander Peskinov. He's going to be here in September. Okay, great. Yeah. And he will be doing a workshop for students as well. So uh, one night a concert, one night a workshop for students. Okay, so we're, we're glad to have that. Um, the piano on the stage, uh, the Steingraber Concert Grand won the Paris Piano Competition in 2009 as the best concert grand for classical music in the world. Okay. And so we had to have that for our stage. Can you give us a tour? This a nice place right quick. Sure. Um, as I said, the piano on the stage is, is the ninth of the concert grand. Um, we, uh, we keep a second piano there for uh, student recitals. Uh, very often, uh, students will come in, want to perform. Real and nice. The acoustics, I think, in this hall are wonderful. You put 99 people in this concert hall, and the acoustics are just fabulous. Wow. Some of that tinkling noise you hear in the background is uh, coming from our rebuilding shop. So maybe we should go in there next. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. We are rebuilding a couple pianos here um, with uh, Keith Frazier and Sonny Copeland. Uh, the rebuilding of a piano, tearing it completely apart, starting over, um, requires about four months of labor. A piano, most people don't realize, but you can see parts lying around here, action parts. But in a standard grand piano, you're talking about approximately 11,000 parts. People wonder why pianos are expensive. There's 11,000 parts in it that all have to be put together. So, uh, as I said, it's a, it's a long process. It takes us about four months to totally rebuild the piano. And Ryan, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, the hammers and uh, the keys and the different things, and uh, wow, it's a lot of work. 
It is a lot of work. Jeez. I'll, I'll show you some that are finished in a few minutes. That can be totally rebuilt. And, uh, wait, wait for a second before you pound. <laughs> and, and I have a question. On the, yeah. They don't do ivory keys no more, right? They do not. That's okay. uh, it's illegal to use ivory. This this piano is from the 1920s, okay. and um, so we try to preserve the ivory okay. if it's if it's on the piano. Okay. Um, but of course, you cannot put new ivory. Okay. Can we go ahead and head it this way? Are we? Some more. Uh, these are used pianos that we have available for sale. We have another couple rooms of used pianos here. And uh, notice uh, this is an English piano from 1902. You can see the beautiful wood, the rosewood in that. Um, pretty hard to find wood of this quality anymore. And uh, if you do find it, it's terribly expensive. And then uh, a good selection of used pianos. All of our pianos come with a full warranty. Every piano goes through our shop, whether it's a piano for six hundred ninety-five dollars or ten thousand. And then back this way. And what is this? Um, can you pronounce this? This is uh, this piano, a uh, Nordiska, is uh, a newer piano. This this is a used piano. Nordiska uh, is actually a piano that was produced. This particular piano was produced in China. Oh, okay. Uh, the original company, of course, was from I think Sweden. But uh, they went out of business some time ago, and the, the name is being used on uh, this product that was now made in China. Sound Russian a little bit now. Yeah. Nordishka. <laughs> right. But it's not. Okay. Old, these, this is a 1939 Baldwin in maple. Hard to find that anymore as well. And uh, we've just finished that. It, it has, of course, because of 1939, has ivory teeth. And this is the picture that she's playing this piano right here. <laughs> no, screen. not that particular one. It does look very similar, though. So, out here, we have it is from originally it was built in 1912. Wow. And completely re restored. It's a nine foot fortic. Uh, Forex um, are five generations. Julius Forex uh, the fifth is a friend of mine, and we uh, sell his pianos. I've been working with Julius for many, many years. So this is a nine foot, nine foot consagrant. Wow. Uh, these are newer Forex right here. This one uh, Forex made for us with our choice of materials, so you can see. Particularly if you come over here, you can see this beautiful wood that's been used, and that's a burled walnut. Nice. Uh, so with the details of that, and this was this was handmade in Germany. The great piano. And of course, you've seen we we represent Yamaha and uh, and Kawai, the two major Japanese companies as well. Okay, so. Um Yamaha and Kawai, they almost the same or the same quality or whatever? They're similar quality, yes, okay. very much. Um, people always ask me which one's better. There's not a, a better. The sound is a little bit different. Okay. I think Yamaha is clearer. Maybe Kawai sometimes is a little warmer sound. Okay. But it's kind of like trying to choose between uh, Infinity and Lexus. Lexus yeah. uh, which one's better? I don't know. But um, in this situation, they're very comparable pianos quality-wise. Okay, they do sound different. I heard about something that were called carbon fiber. Can you explain? Um, to yeah, me what we've is been that? involved in uh, a, a new project, which um, is you, the use of carbon fiber for soundboards okay. instead of the general uh, use of uh, spruce. Spruce is getting harder and harder to find good spruce. Okay, and um, 
been looking at the possibility of using carbon fiber. Obviously, there's a, a lot of pluses for it. You, it's almost impossible to break. Wow. It's never going to crack. It's going to outlast the people, the piano, everything. Uh, it's not affected by humidity. So, consequently, the piano stays in tune better. It doesn't fluctuate uh, and cause the piano to go out of tune that a spruce soundboard would do. Okay, so, um, so with the carbon fiber, it kind of guaranteed that your piano would be um, around a, a little bit longer than the average piano, right? It would be around longer and it would be tuning-wise more stable. Okay, so musicians, so we could um, start getting pianos, real pianos, and uh, we could still buy keyboards, but now we have, an, we have a good reason to get pianos because now with the carbon fiber, it can last a little bit longer, you know, then to keep getting it tuned, keep, um, you know, getting it refixed and all this other stuff. Let me show you one. Yeah, please. Okay. This is a piano built in Germany uh, by Steingraber Piano. And this has a carbon fiber soundboard. Um, there are, on this model, two in the United States. We have both of them. And um, you can see if you can get closer in here where the, the soundboard is now black because it's carbon fiber rather than spruce. And uh, hopefully we'll get you to play for a second and uh, so you can hear this piano. I think it's uh, a great sounding instrument and um, this is a, a first. These bridge A graphs is also something that I worked on in terms of patenting with the original uh, inventor of it. So these are patented, and uh, I think this will be somewhat of the, the future of uh, pianos. Please play. here at Atlantic Music is we're, besides, we're involved in rebuilding process, we're doing some restorations of true antique pianos because I have an interest also in the sound of pianos from the 1830s, 40s, and 50s, and Chopin and Schumann and composers like that were composing. So we're, we're working on rebuilding pianos of that vintage as well. Okay, and, and I heard that you're off, uh, that you, I don't know if this was a rumor, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I heard that you fly uh, to Japan all over. Uh, I spent network. most of my time actually uh, flying to Europe because I okay. represent quite a few companies, uh, both in Germany and England. Wow. Um, and uh, occasionally, uh, right now, the hot piano market in today's world is China, okay. mainland China. Uh, I do work with uh, a company in China as well. So, um, I get a lot of uh, miles. Yes. And also with, with the new age of the carbon fiber and, you know, less tuning, less, um, you know, the piano guy can fix your piano all the time. 
So now musicians, we can feel safe to come and buy a piano. And I noticed something. Uh, I'm in Melbourne, Florida right now in this piano shop, but I've been in Orlando. I've been in some uh, different parts of in, in Florida, not saying that they don't have it, but you very rarely see these pianos in Florida, but up here. Um, they're got to be expensive. Right? They are expensive, um, and, but of course we have lots of pianos that aren't expensive yes. and we're very competitive with, yes. with anyone. But people come in uh, to Melbourne, Florida, as strange as that may sound, yes. uh, from really all over the country to see our pianos. Wow. So we're, we're pretty pleased about that. We sell a lot of pianos to uh, customers in all parts of the country. And uh, uh, we we work hard at uh, at uh, having the pianos on the floor, prepped and ready to perform on. We have our own technicians, their staff. That's quite different than most piano stores that usually hire a tuner to come in and tune something on the floor. We want to make sure every piano on the floor is the way it should be. Okay. And this piano right here, you can play it in concerts, uh, jazz concert, churches, uh, just anything like that, right? Yes, you could. And I'm involved also in um, other developments that you're going to see real soon in pianos um, in regard to uh, carbon fiber. Wow. So um, in September, uh, Richard Dane out of England, whom I work with a great deal, is going to exhibit an all carbon fiber piano. So the whole piano made out of carbon fiber, very lightweight. Wow. This piano probably weighs 1,100 pounds. Okay. It'll it'll more than cut it in half. So basically, it's going to be like a space shuttle up here. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. 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 Okay. You have some more carbon fiber pianos. We do. Okay, can we take a look at it? Sure. So what's the price range on this, or carbon light pianos? Like what a, what's well, the price range? A price range on carbon fiber, it really is, um, does not significantly raise the price of the piano. Uh, the carbon fiber soundboard is about the same cost as the finest of spruce boards. Okay. There's like all products, there's all levels of spruce quality and pianos range from having laminated sound boards which are probably at the, the bottom in terms of resonance to the finest grain of spruce that you can use and find. Uh, carbon fiber will compete with the, the top of the spruce boards in price. Okay. So there's not, not a significant raise in price at all. Okay. Wow. 